All right, you guys, it's Elevated here. Uh, today's video is on the topic of being in the world, not of the world. Um, so like my last video, I'm going to be doing a lot of um, um, Bible verses um, to kind of parse them out. Now, before I talk about the Bible, I do want to say that um, there's a lot of issues I have with it. Um, first off, whether it's due to um, intentional or unintentional um, mistakes from like translations um, throughout the centuries. <laughs> There's this, there's really this concept that you have to get through your head. The Bible talks about multiple gods. Like, there are multiple gods referred to in the Bible. Like, I think one verse says that um, Satan is the god of this world. And um, especially, like, a lot of, like, Old Testament um, um, god that they talk about. Uh, like, that, how they say he's a he's a jealous god and this and that. Um, like, when when you think about it, like, why would the one true God be jealous of false gods? Um, so a lot of the times you really have to parse it out and, like, be, um, have, like, discernment to be able to tell, okay, this, clearly they're talking about <clears throat> God as in, quote-unquote, like, the Satan, um, that is the, the God of this realm, not the actual one true God. Um... So, yeah, I'm I'm going to try and parse out um, things like that where they kind of, like, twist the, the words in the Bible. But um, as we go through it. But, yeah, so um, we'll start out with the hatred of the world. Um, so they say, if the world hates you, understand that it hated me first. If you were of the world, it would love you as its own. Instead, the world hates you because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Now, generally, um, <laughs> like typical um, fundamental Christians would read that and be like, oh, clearly they're talking about us because, you know, war on Christmas, um, the discrimination that we get. But realistically, like the, the version of Christianity that most people like fundamentalists follow, um, like they've dominated the uh, um, like Western culture for centuries. So, um, a lot of the times, like, they, it, the, the discrimination that they talk about is really just, um, worldly discrimination. It's not the actual, like, so, like, the Gnostics that were thrown into the lion's den, um, back in Rome, I think, um, those are the types of people who would, uh, probably profess the things I kind of mentioned in my last video, the whole, like, um, um, thou shalt not kill, like, ever. So, to tell the difference between that, like, if you're the type of uh, Christian that believes in self-defense and you would be like, oh, well, you can't, you can't live your whole life without um, self-defense. Like, clearly it's going to be, like, it's going to be trouble for you. Like, that's the, you're, you're not the type of Christian I'm talking about. The type of Christian I'm talking about is the one that actually, like, like a Gnostic Christian who actually, like, understands these things on a deeper level more than just, like, um, surface level. So, yeah. Um, as we go through this, I'll try to mainly just focus on the important stuff. Um, but, yeah. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. I think this is Jesus talking, by the way. If I had do not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. So, um, like, these are the type of people who get really, like, hung up on, um, like I said, like, the types of stuff I said in my last video. Um, well, how can you live your whole life without, um defending yourself or without uh, resorting to violence in some situations like it's it's <laughs> like their their excuse is always oh the world is gonna hate me or um like it's it's gonna lead to me um suffering and it's like well yeah that's kind of the point because the world isn't <laughs> the world is not of god <laughs> but yeah um so yeah that's they hated me without reason or like when he says um now that they have seen and hated both me and my father, like, people, like, 
fundamentalist Christians really don't understand the Bible, and if you try to tell them what it what it's really saying, they will absolutely like hiss at you and like <laughs> attack you for it. So that's the true test. <laughs> um, so yeah, testing the spirits, beloved. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Uh, yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> By this, you will know the spirit of God. And uh, this is one part where it's like, clearly there was some, um, again, whether it's intentional or unintentional, it doesn't really matter. But there's some like manipulation that goes on here. So they say every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that that, that does not confess Jesus is not from God. Um, now, there's some debate on whether, like, Jesus was, like, an allegorical story or whether it was, like, historically accurate. To me, it really makes no difference um, when they when people say stuff like, oh, well, you're only a true Christian if you confess that Jesus lived or something like that. Like, mm -mm. um it's not entirely true. Really, the more important thing is confessing that what Jesus said is true. Um, if you're like, <laughs> this is why I'd, sometimes I think it is manipulation because it's like, oh, they, they just want you to think it's like, oh, all I have to do is confess that Jesus lived. And that's the most important thing. It's like, no, the most important thing is his teachings, not not just the fact that he lived. So it's like it, it almost makes um, people think or like people only take that one step and go, don't go any further it's kind of like the same reason why i don't like voting it's because a lot of people are like oh this is how i express my opinion this is how i make my change in the world and then they don't proceed to do anything else besides vote it's like <laughs> no there's more to be done but it's whatever <laughs> um so yeah i uh, says um you, little church, are from God and have overcome them, because great is he who is in you than he who is in the world. They are of the world. That is why they speak from the world's perspective. Uh, like I said, like, um, oh, you can't. <laughs> I can't just live my whole life without defending myself. <laughs> like, that's the world's perspective. Like, obviously, I'm going to suffer. Like, yeah, <laughs> well, life is suffering. So, like, are you suffering? Um for worldly material gains or are you suffering for spiritual gains think about it um that is why they speak from the world's perspective and the world listens to them again that's why the main branch of christian the main like um popular branch of christianity is um well popular um it says we are from god whoever knows god listens to us whoever is not from god does not listen to us that is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deception. So yeah, if you hear, if you, like, if, if someone hears me talking about this and they're like, oh, this is, this is ridiculous. This isn't true. Like, mm. <laughs> that's how you would know. Like, uh, what do they say? Um, you shall know them by the fruits of their labors type, type stuff. Um, so yeah, a warning against pride. <clears throat> what causes conflicts and quarrels among you? Don't they come from the passions at war within you? Um, you crave what you do not have. You kill and covet, but are unable to obtain it. Um, kind of like um, satisfaction and like the Buddhist idea of like desire. Like you're always going to be desiring things. Um, if you, If you don't kill that desire within you, um, I would say like desire itself is of, is of Satan, is of the world in a, in a sense. So yeah, you crave what you do not have. You kill and covet, but are unable to obtain it. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask. And when you do ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may squander it on your pleasures. So, um, this is kind of like... People want to, uh, people want to do good. This is my, I think I mentioned this before. My biggest problem with, um, religion growing up was like, you're always taught sin is bad. Don't do it. And you'll get into heaven. Like it's a, like it's a fucking, um, carrot and a stick. Um, like it's a treat that you're rewarded with for being good when it's like, 
you're 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 aiming to do good because you want to be rewarded is not like that's the wrong motive for it <laughs> um if you're seeking to be rewarded you're looking for like worldly um pleasure um so yeah we go on you adulteresses you do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward god therefore whoever chooses to be a friend of the world renders himself an enemy of god or do you think the scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to dwell in us yearns with envy, <laughs> but he gives more grace? This is why it says, excuse me, this is why it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not bridle his tongue, he deceives his heart and his religion is worthless. Pure and undefiled religion before our God and Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So the type of Christianity that's like God hates gays. Um, <laughs> he's like those people are deceiving their heart and their religion is worthless. Like it, this is literally from their Bible that's telling them this. But again... <laughs> A lot of people are of the world and they're going to enjoy the world. And they're, if, if, if you try to tell them this, like I said, they're going to be, um, wait, where is it? If, um, it's, I said it earlier, um, like they're, the world, um, praises them for it because they're speaking of worldly gains. So, yeah. Um, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, on account of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, sounds a lot like a change in perspective or awareness or ego death or something like that. Then you will be able to test and approve what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but think of yourself with sober judgment according to the measure of faith God has given you. Um, yeah. I have an issue with faith, too. Like, it's, 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 it's similar to, like, that thing where it says, um, all you have to do is confess in Jesus and you'll be re rewarded with salvation. It's like... There's more to it than just that. Like, um, yeah, <laughs> there's more to it than just faith. <laughs> faith is such a, like, it can be so convoluted and diluted. Most people don't even like, um, faith is just like wishful thinking for a lot of people. But yeah. Um, so this final one, do not love the world. I have written to you fathers because you know him was from the beginning. I've written to you young men because you are strong and the world of, and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. And this is, um, I believe in another verse, like obviously like, um, I think one of the commandments is respect to thy mother and father. But then in another part in the Bible, it says you're supposed to love God more than you love your family or whatever. Whereas this one is specifically saying, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. <laughs> There's more I can get into about the pride of life, but it's really not my place to talk about it. But yeah, so that's basically the idea that we're talking about today. Um, being in the world, but not of the world. Being in the world is just like pure and undefiled religion. Basically, all you're here to do is no i said it in my last video it's not that all you're here to do is reduce other people's suffering 
that's just one of the acceptable things to do. Like, you're not here to increase suffering, obviously. Um, actually, I wrote that down, too. I was, wanted to mention that. <clears throat> like, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today, um, it's... It, it, it can be misconstrued. Uh, a lot of people, like, especially with, like, Buddhist thought, um, it's almost like they want you, like, to become a quote-unquote passive observer. Um, when it's like, no, like, you still have, like, you still have to do, like, certain action in this life. Uh, you still have a spiritual path to go on. You're still here to do something. Um, but yeah. The next one we're looking at... You can go in order. Why not? Um, so this is... What is it called? Desiderata, an old uh, poem. Um, this is actually on, if you watch Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, I think the third one where Jack Sparrow is, like, shirtless, and he's got all those copies of himself. This is his back tattoo, and it's, um, pretty much sums up what I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, so, um, this is kind of the idea of being in the world, but not of the world. Go placidly amid the noise and haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. <laughs> One of my biggest things about, like, church goers is like church is always loud and obnoxious and and praise the lord and sing your sh praises high and this and that when it's like no <laughs> i mean <laughs> um what does he say be still and know that i am god like that is m m much more my own um preferred method of of praise i would say i guess um but yeah Remember what peace there may be in silence, as far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Without surrender, as far as possible. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others, even to the dull and the ignorant. They too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourself. Um, this is also has to do with um, judge not lest ye be judged. And it's just like um, people always assume, oh, you're going to be judged by God and go to hell. It's like, no, if you're judging others and you're inherently judging yourself as well. Um Kind of like um, if you're judging someone for doing something wrong, like you're you're judging yourself as in like, oh well, I don't do that, so I'm a good person. That's that's pride. That's that's <laughs> that gets in the way. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Um, enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Um, I'm going to be talking about more in my uh, July video, I think. More about, like... Like I said earlier, um... Let's see if I can pull it up again. I did kind of want to mention that. Hmm. Oh yeah, when when he says um when you do ask you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. So like the it doing good for the sake of being rewarded with heaven is is the wrong way to do it. 
Um, so this, it's in the same way, I want to mention that here too. Many persons strive for high ideals and everywhere life is full of heroism, but at the same time, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So like you really, again, have to be discerning and watch out for that. So yeah, <clears throat> be, your, uh, be yourself, especially do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love for in the face of all aridity, aridity, I did say that right. Aridity and disenchantment, it is it is as perennial as the grass. Um I'm gonna be talking about love too. Um I ooh, that might be a good video I could do later on about the different types of love. Um But um I'm gonna be mentioning that later in this video about talking about love. Um specifically like romantic love versus uh, what is that, the uh, agape. Um, or uh, godly love. Um, so romantic love is um, one of those things that would be in the world. Um, so when God says, um, "Do not love any, do not love the world or anything in the world that includes romantic love." Like romance, romance is mm, gotta watch out for it. Um, so yeah. Take kindly to the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Um, honestly, you should gracefully surrender, like, everything in this life. Because <laughs> um, it's not permanent. It's not going to last forever. It's not... It's, it's, again, it's all worldly. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a home, wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. Mm. I would say... Mm, like, physically, yeah, humans are of this, of this world. But, like, spiritually, again, like he says... I'm just going to keep this up because I'm probably going to go back and forth to it. If you were of the world, it would love you as its own. Instead, the world hates you because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Um, so when it says stuff like you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars, you have a right to be here. Um, so a lot of pe a lot of people have an issue with the way the world is and like people are like, oh, why is it that, um, people who are predatory and, um, sociopathic and manipulative, why do they always get, um, ahead in life and people who are naturally good, like they always get like, what do they say? Good guys finish last. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, like that, that type of idea, it's like they, they are, like that because they are of the world they they are of that's how the world is again satan is the god of this realm god of this world so <clears throat> if you um you know if you if you are of the world and you um do like worldly virtues which would be like predatory animalistic barbaric like i'm gonna take what i want and um i'm gonna fight and conquer people who oppose me and stuff like that it's like yeah you're you're you, <coughs> you are a child of this universe and you probably belong here and you probably need to stay here <laughs> um but yeah <laughs> And whether or not it is clear to you no doubt the universe is an unfolding as it should um Therefore, be uh, at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. Yeah, I disagree with this last part, especially the whole beautiful world thing. The thing about, like, especially, um, like, New Age people, like, oh, the world is what you make of it. Like, it can be a beautiful place and this and that. It's like... It's just as wrong as cynical people who say, um, um, 
what am I trying to say? Like the world is is broken and it's it's polluted and it's garbage and it's 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 bad. It's a hellish place to be. It's like the world is both actually. <clears throat> and it's like um I I don't want to go into it or like why that is the way it is, but like yeah, it's if you're if you're glorifying one part of the world, you're like you're denying the other part. And if you're praising the world for the world, again, you're loving it and not um not the one true God. But yeah. Um be cheerful, strive to be happy. I would say sh- striving for anything. Again, like that's desire, that's the wheel of um What is that dukkha? I want to say, um, it's like you're you're striving to be happy, like you're never going to be happy. Like just be. Um, and this one as well. I'm gonna get into uh, Herman Hesse's Siddhartha, but uh, everyone knows this song. Uh, row row your boat gently down the stream. Life is but a dream. Um, like the people who were um, rocking their boat and being like. Um, Oh, I'm gonna be mean, like, damn anyone who thinks differently. I'm unapo. Uh, what do they say? <laughs> Sorry, unapologetically me. That's that is the funniest phrase to me ever. <laughs> like, who needs to apologize for being you? First of all, the people who say they're unapod- uh wow, unapologetically me, are probably the pe- the exact same people who need to apologize for being the people that they are. <laughs> it's really funny but yeah uh we're gonna go into siddhartha now siddhartha siddhartha however you pronounce it herman hesh um so this is near the end um siddhartha is a book about um this kid who goes on this um spiritual journey meets uh gautama the buddha uh meets a lot of other different people in his life and like he's like all of us just well Sorry, like some of us <laughs> trying to find the meaning of life and samsara and nirvana and this and that. Um, but he returns back to um, this one guy, the ferryman, Vasudeva. And um, Vasudeva is kind of like out of... <laughs> it's funny because um, Saratha means Gautama. He meets um, some other like false uh, Buddhas. Um, and all these different people, but like honestly, out of all these people, Vasudeva, the 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 guy who rows the ferry across the river, is probably the closest dude to enlightenment than anyone else in the book. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, so we'll go ahead and read this. Afterwards, it was almost the time of sunset. They sat on a log by the bank, and Siddhartha told the ferryman about where he originally came from and about his life, as he had seen it before his eyes today in that hour of despair. Until late at night lasted his tale. Vasudeva listened with great attention. Listening carefully, he let everything enter his mind. Birthplace and childhood. All that learning, all that searching, all joy, all distress. This is, this was among the ferryman's virtues, one of the greatest. Like only a few he knew how to listen. Again, be still. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, without him having spoken a word, the speaker sensed how Vasudeva let his words enter his mind. Sorry, I'm looking for my water. <clears throat> Quiet, open, waiting. How he did not lose a single one, awaited not a single one with impatience, did not add his praise or rebuke, was just listening. And again, this is, um, like I said, um, this can be interpreted as like just being a passive observer but there's more to it than just that. But um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and continue. <clears throat> Siddhartha felt what a happy fortune it is to confess to such a listener, to bury in his heart his own life, his own search, his own suffering. But, <clears throat> excuse me, in the end of Siddhartha's tale, when he spoke of the tree by the river and of his deep fall of the holy Om and how he had felt such a love for the river after his slumber, <clears throat> The ferryman listened with twice the attention, entirely and completely absorbed by it, with his eyes closed. But when Siddhartha fell silent, and a long silence had occurred, then Vasudeva said, 
It is as I thought. The river has spoken to you. It is your friend as well. It speaks to you as well. That is good. That is very good. Stay with me, Siddhartha, my friend. I used to have a wife. Her bed was next to mine, but she has died a long time ago. For a long time, I have lived alone. <clears throat> now you shall live with me. There is space and food for both. <clears throat> I thank you, said Siddhartha. I thank you and accept. And I also thank you for this, Vasudeva, for listening to me so well. These people are rare who know how to listen. And I did not meet a single one who knew it as well as you did. I will also learn in this respect from you. You will learn it, spoke Vasudeva, but not from me. The river has taught me to listen. From it, you will learn it as well. It knows everything, the river. Everything can be learned from it. Um, see, you've already learned this from the water, too, that it is good to strive downwards, to sink, to seek depth. That's another really important one. I probably should have highlighted that, honestly. Um, the rich and elegant Siddhartha is becoming an oarsman's servant. The learned Brahmin Siddhartha becomes a ferryman. This has also been told to you by the river. You'll learn that other thing from it as well, said Siddhartha after a long pause. What other thing, the Siddhartha? <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, it's early in the morning. The suit of a rose. <clears throat> it is late, he said. Let's go to sleep. I can't tell you that other thing, oh friends. You'll learn it, or perhaps you know it already. See, I'm no learned man. I have no special skill in speaking. I also have no special skill in thinking. All I'm able to do is listen and to be godly. I have learned nothing else. Very important. This one I'll leave highlighted. Um, if I was able to say and teach it, I might be a wise man. But like this, I am only a ferryman, and it is my task to ferry people across the river. I have transported many thousands, and to all of them, my river has been nothing but an obstacle on their travels. They travel to seek money and business, and for weddings and on pro pilgrimages, and the river was obstructing their path. And the ferryman's job was to get them quickly across that obstacle. Um, but for some among thousands, a few, four or five, the river has stopped being an obstacle. They have heard its voice, they have listened to it, and the river has become sacred to them, as it has become sacred to me. Let's rest now, Siddhartha. Um, yeah, there's a lot to unpack in this. <clears throat> so at first, this is going to kind of conflict with what I was saying earlier about like not loving the world. Um, in this, you kind of want to look at the river as like a metaphor for life. So a lot of people think life, um, parts of their lives are just like an obstacle and they're, they're like, you know, busying themselves, going, what, doing, seeking money in business, love, um, pilgrimages, <laughs> um, and the river was obstructing their path. And the ferryman's job was to get them across that obstacle. Um, so th this is why I say he's probably the most in line because it's like, he's, he's not trying to enforce his like teachings on them. He's not, um, all he's doing is people come to him, ask him for, um, his service and he provides it. And every now and then someone asks him for more than just his service, like Siddhartha coming to him and asking him to teach under him. And that's when he, he's like, yeah, okay. Like it's not, it's not, you're not, <laughs> <laughs> like this ferryman again um whoever knows god listens to us whoever is not from god does not listen to us so the ferryman clearly sees that all these people busying themselves with life um go on and on like they're not going to listen to him anyways so he's not here to save them like that's that's the difference um between like a lot of christianity what is that Proselyt proselytization where it's like, oh, you have to spread the word of God. It's like, mm. <laughs> Bible tells you, um, whoever's not from God does not listen to you. <laughs> so like, why waste your time with that? Again, like, why waste your time trying to love anything in the world? Um, you know, so yeah, that's why I say he's probably like pretty, um, pretty enlightened. Um, Siddhartha stayed with the ferryman and learned to operate the boat. And when there was nothing to do at the ferry, he woke with Vasudeva. Oh, sorry, he worked with Vasudeva in the rice field, gathered wood, plucked the fruit off the banana trees. He learned to build an oar and learned to mend the boat and to weave baskets, and was joyful because of everything he learned. And the days and months 
excuse me, pass quickly. But more than Vesudava could teach him, he was taught by the river. Incessantly, he learned from it. <laughs> Most of all, he learned from it to listen, to pay close attention with a quiet heart, with a waiting, opened soul, without passion, without a wish, without judgment, without an opinion. This is essentially what being in the world, not of the world, is. Kill your desires, basically. Um, oh, there was something I wanted to mention, too, um, in here. I think it's when Vasudeva was like... Um, All I'm, yeah, he's like, I have no special skill in speaking. I have no special skill in uh, thinking. All I'm able to do is listen and to be godly. I've learned nothing else. <clears throat> um, so, funnily enough, Sherlock Holmes pretty much says the same thing, too. Um, where he's like, I'm only focused on what n what needs to help me in this life, and I don't care about anything else, basically. So, um, this is... Um, Sherlock Holmes. I think this is actually one of the first books. Um, Study in Scarlet. or uh, um, Actually, yeah, I think it was Study in Scarlet. So, um, his ignorance was as remarkable as his knowledge. Of contemporary literature, philosophy, and politics, he appeared to know next to nothing. Upon my quoting Thomas Carlyle, he inquired in the naivest way to who, who he might be and what he had done. My surprise reached a climax, however, when I found incidentally that he was ignorant of the Copernican theory and of the composition of the solar system. That any civilized human being in this 19th century should not be aware that the Earth traveled around the sun appeared to, me, appeared to be to me such an extraordinary fact that I could hardly realize it. <laughs> um, so it's, it's funny because it kind of goes into the both the people who obsess over like flat earth as well as the people who were obsessed with like astronomy um and like um like universal laws like mm, how should i say it the neil degrasse tysons of the world oh <laughs> fucking hate that guy Anyways, um, he says, you appear to be astonished, he said, smiling at my expression of surprise. Now that I do know it, I shall do my best to forget it. To forget it? You see, he explained, I consider that a man's brain originally is like a little empty attic, and you have to stock it with such furniture as you choose. A fool takes in all the lumber of every sort that he comes across, so that the knowledge which might be useful to him gets crowded out or at best is jumbled up with a lot of other things so that he has a difficulty in laying his hands upon it. Now, the skillful workman is very careful indeed as to what he takes into his brain attic. He will have nothing but the tools which may help him in doing his work. But of these, he has a large assortment and all in the most perfect order. It is a mistake to think that that little room has elastic walls and can distend to any extent. Depend upon it, there comes a time for when every addition, when for every addition of knowledge you forget something that you knew before. It is of the highest importance, therefore, not to have useless facts elbowing out the useful ones. Um, this kind of goes into, um, like, my uh, first video on Jainism, um, talking about, um, like, what, what beliefs, like, actually suit you in this spiritual path? What beliefs serve you and what beliefs are just cluttering your mind? And, like, causing you to get false notions, causing you to aim for false desires, like, um, yeah, stuff like that. He says, but the solar system, I protested. What the deuce is it to me, he interrupted impatiently. You say that we go around the sun. If we went around the moon, it would not make a penny worth of difference to me or to my work. I was on the point of asking what that work might be, but something in his manner showed me that the question would be an unwelcome one. I pondered over our short conversation, however, and endeavored to draw my deductions from it. He said that he would acquire no knowledge which did not bear upon his object. Therefore, all the knowledge which he possessed was such as would be useful to him. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> 
telling you like don't worry about like like don't obsess with the world don't obsess with uh don't obsess with the news <laughs> politics um like the world is going to operate in a worldly manner like i said satan is in charge of the world you can't change the world you can't fix the world that's just the way it is keep your knowledge useful don't waste your time on like worrying about like this or that go placidly amid the noise and haste desiderata so yeah um uh, i kind of i kind of want to save this for a whole video too um cuz this is talking about love um I mentioned this actually in one of my um, poetry videos about why um, why I'm foregoing love. And I said it in there that it's because it, like, poisons the art. But honestly, it poisons the spirit, is what I should have said. The art is just secondary. It's, it's just an expression of the spirit. Um, but yeah. Um... Yeah, I'll do this for a separate video, but I will talk about just, like, the first one. Um, so, Kierkegaard, um, actually fell in love with, um, Regine Olsen, and they actually were, they, they could have had, like, a really happy marriage. Um, I'm still looking for the dang, um, quote that he says, because he says something specifically like, um, I had to choose between being a great husband or a great philosopher i couldn't choose both because that would make me um mediocre in both aspects and being a mediocre i think he said being a mediocre husband was actually the worst of it because it's like if he were gonna be a husband to this regime he wanted to be the best husband ever but he chose philosophy and um his religious convictions um and Regine explains it as, like, Kierkegaard's motivation for the break was his conception of his religious task. He dared not bind himself to anyone on earth in order not to be obstructed from his calling. He had to sacrifice the very best thing he owned in order to work as God demanded of him. Therefore, he sacrificed love for the sake of his writing. So, yeah, that's kind of... um. Again, the Bible is so convoluted, diluted. Like, I'm pretty sure there's another passage that says, like, marrying and having offspring is, like, a, a, a dutiful service to God. But, again, like, there's multiple gods. <laughs> the only service that does is to Satan. It just expands his realm. Especially with the um, the probability of that new person being of of the world and not of the true god um like yeah clearly satan's gonna want you to reproduce clearly satan's gonna want you to fall for this false notion of like oh love is uh, <laughs> just the just the idea that love should last forever like that's <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> that's so selfish it's desirous it's it's an affront to god honestly <clears throat> like it really is like who who wants to spend an eternity with anyone like that's it's ah it just doesn't it blows my mind it really does but yeah we'll save this for another video um actually my next video in july is going to be about um it's going to be looking at all this stuff, but through um, Jainist perspective, we're actually going to be touching back on Jainism. Yay, finally. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, and we're also going to be talking about like karma and um, the idea of like, um, like just the motivation to do good works, like to be rewarded versus like just doing works to do them. Um, but yeah. This is being in the world, not of the world. Let me see if I have anything else to add. Let me think real quick. Um, no, I think, I think that's about it. So, yeah.
<sighs> that should be it. Um, yeah. Y'all take it easy.